Hi everyone, this is Kimber uh, with Curvy Heart Face Painting. Um, this is my lovely model and niece, Elizabeth. Say hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Okay, so we're doing sugar skulls today. And so Elizabeth picked her colors of her sugar skull, which are going to be orange and purple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy spray bottle that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to spray my white palette. See how it's nice and runny? And then I'm going to also spray my sponge. If you spray your sponge, oh, sorry Elizabeth, if you spray your sponge, it's going to get it nice and wet and ready to soak up all the white you want. So you just scoop it around, try to get it as much as you can. And then once you think you have enough, you're gonna take your sponge and you're gonna test it on yourself first. So that is not see-through, it's plenty pigmented, so we're good. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get started on Elizabeth. Now for our sugar skull, we are not doing her eye sockets white we're gonna leave we're gonna actually we are we're gonna do her eye sockets white because i have or not white we're gonna do them orange so i'm going to go all around her face and i just take the sponge and i go around and if you notice that it's starting to become a little bit more see-through you just keep patting it or you let it dry and you're going to come back to it you can also smear and then dab but if you notice i'm starting to get a little drier so i'm going to take my spray bottle again away from elizabeth this time and i'm going to wet my paint and i'm going to re-wet this now if anyone has any questions about techniques please ask me but i'm going to be straight up honest especially since people ask me all the time like oh how long have you been doing this and all that other fun stuff i normally just tell them the truth that I, and I'm, I'm not pressing hard, so I'm not hurting Elizabeth, but I tell them I watch YouTube. That's it. I watch YouTube. So, and then if I had problems like with, like I was used to use a brush to go through, but then I discovered that with the brush, it left a lot of streaks and I didn't like streaks. I wanted it to be more clean cut. So that's why I looked up on Amazon on what would be the best sponge used for face painting. I'm gonna go around your eye, baby. I'm gonna keep your head down. Here. Um, right. And as you can see, the longer you take the sponge, or the depending on the temperature of the house or outside, you sometimes you're gonna have to like spray down and redo your your thing a couple of times. I um, uh, but like I said, I researched what kind of sponges. I had several different kinds until I discovered this one. And I bought this one off of Amazon in a bulk package. And I use it The sponges. I wash them, reuse them. And then if they start to get grody, I just throw them away and buy more. But I try to use them as much as possible. Um, and the sponge is really nice for getting in the creases of the nose, on the nose, and around the face. So essentially we want her as white as the grunge girl from that scary movie. But she's too young to know what I'm talking about. So we're just gonna let that be. All right, look at the camera. So if you notice, she's pretty ghostly in such a cute way. All right, we're gonna touch up around your eye right here. Okay, touch up any spots that you feel you're missing. I am pretty content with mine, so I'm gonna just let it be. Um, I want to do her eye sockets orange. So I'm taking the spray paint and my orange and the sponge that I just used for the white because it has some white on it. So it's going to be good to help blend in with the white of her skin. So it's not super like cut and dry. So I'm just taking the sponge and just going in circles, soaking up as much as possible. Over here is still kind of white. And like I said, I sprayed it with water first. All right, close your eyes, Elizabeth. Now I use um, a couple different kinds of paints, um, but most of the ones I use are pretty sensitive skin um, oriented. So I have face painted at a couple hundred parties so far in the last three years. I just do this for fun on the weekends. I enjoy spending times and making kids happy and I like painting. So I try to do the best I can. If you notice, I'm just taking the corner of the sponge and I'm just going in her eye socket. It's okay if it comes out a little bit. We're gonna cover it with flower petals anyways. So I'm not too worried. All right, 
Now, if you notice, it gives a nice, over here, babe, gives a nice glowing effect, even though it kind of looks like a little bit like a pumpkin right now. Um, so once those two spots are out of the way, um, I have this really awesome split cake. It has a little bit of blue on it, but it, a split cake is two separate or multiple colored paints in one palette. So this one's light purple and dark purple. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to take one of my bigger brush, uh, medium sized brushes, um, make sure it's nice and clean. Um, I'm using this round, I think it's six. Yes, round six. Now it's a Walmart brand, um, or I got it from Walmart, so it's very, you know, original, easy, accessible. I'm gonna spray the water on this, get it nice and wet. You want dark purple? No problem, baby. And so I'm just going to take my brush. It was a little damp before, and I'm gonna get it, just swirl it around, build it up quite nicely. You just want a nice, thick coat. Like I said, if you're not sure about the thickness or if you have enough paint on your brush, just go in, test it out on your finger. I'm happy with that. You happy with that color? Okay. So now that she's happy with it, we're gonna take the purple. And if for some reason you find it gets a little drier as you go, you can always dip your paintbrush in a little bit of water and get back to the palette. Or you can just use the um, spray bottle and right wet it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the center of my brush and I'm just going to drop, just like that. I'm just going to put the point in and point it out. I like this effect and I know it looks a little sparse right now, but trust me, it's gonna look very cute. And you just keep going. If you find that you're running out of paint, you can always turn your brush around. Now, that last petal, I realized that I ran out of paint. So I'm just gonna get my, or er, the paint dried. So I'm just gonna get some more, just got it wet, going back at it. Um, some people don't like to use paint straight out of their cake palettes because it can cause some issues later on. I don't typically use that as a multiple, like the light and dark purple because it's just not a, a color combination a bunch of people like. But I did like the options of purple. So that's why I went with it because I liked having a light and dark purple and using it whenever I wanted. So um, I'm finding I need to get my brush a little bit wetter. And like I said, you can do it wet or dry, or you can either dip your brush in water or you can just go straight for the spray bottle, miss your palette and go in with the brush. I find either or works. So if you know, I'm just, I'm just putting the point in and dropping it back. In, drop back, in, drop back, in, drop back. Press, press. That's okay if they're a little off-centered and you know, it's not the end of the world. Now I'm gonna go in and do some light purple, now that we did that, give multiple colors. And I even have a sparkly purple I might use. Depends on, that one's blue, but I do have a sparkly purple. But in the end, it's all gonna get glitter anyway. So I'm gonna go back in, same, same way as before. I'm gonna go over these petals. I'm gonna add it in, mix it in with the dark purple. Now it's okay if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. Most kids at the end, if you, they won't even notice the little hiccups and they'll just see it and be like, oh my God, I love it so much. Uh, the only person who really notices is the artists themselves. But sometimes it's a problem, especially if I'm working on my nieces and nephews because I want them to be perfect. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, but I've learned to go a little Bob Ross when it comes with kids. You know, try to make little squirrels and trees if you mess up because sometimes they sneeze, sometimes they have an itch, sometimes it's impossible for them to sit still and those are the ones that you absolutely love because it's just a little bit of a challenge. So if you notice, it gives it her flowers a little bit dimension to go light purple, dark purple. Uh, that's why I left plenty of space in between and now her eye is like the center of the flower and I'm gonna give her some eyelashes when we're done. 
Or if you're doing it at home and you want, and you're a mom or a dad who wants to do like eye, actual eyeliner, you know, that's always an option as well. So I see this one's a little wetter. I'm gonna drop it down a bit. Okay. So now she has beautiful flower eyes. And I want to do a flower on her chin. So I'm gonna do petal and petal and petal. So I like that. Now, I know in my house, there was at least a good couple months where Coco was the most common show played in our house. And still to this day, it's our go-to. So um, that's why I just absolutely love it. Now I have this other split cake, which is very metallic-y, pink, pink, white, and purple. I'm gonna take one of my sponges and my fingers are all nice and gross and white. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go on the pink and purple 50-50. Just back and forth like this. And if you see on the sponge, it has a good amount of both pink and purple, primarily purple, because that's what she wanted. There we go. All right, so, and if you find that your sponge isn't wet or you didn't wet it prior, just spray it with a little bit of water from your spray bottle. You can go and go back at it. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I am going to turn the pink so it's upside down. Then I'm going to do her jawline. And you just dab, just like you did in the beginning. See, adds a little bit. Nice shade. All right, and then we're gonna go do the other side and do pink on the bottom. We're just gonna go through to her, almost to the mouth, but not quite. And let me see. Okay. Now we're just gonna add some shadowing up here. With the sponge that you just used. I'm just gonna add a, a little bit of color right there and a little color right here. You can add it all the way around if you like, but her bangs and hair cover right there, so it's pretty it's pretty okay. I wanna take the leftover metallic purple, see if I have any left. I'm just gonna dab it and add some color to her chin, add a little bit of shine. And then I'm going to take the orange that we had in the beginning and I'm going to grab my number six again. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and wet and rinse it off. Wipe it off, make sure it's white, make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm gonna take this here. I'm just going to get it nice and I'm going to build a nice, I'm going to load up a nice amount of paint on here. Because I like to accent with some colors. So we're going to build this up. Okay. Again, I'm not sure if this color is going to be strong enough, so I'm going to touch it, test on myself. All right. Nice, solid color. Are you a little wet there, Elizabeth? Trying to dry yourself off? Okay, so once you're happy with the amount of paint on your brush, I'm gonna add some dots. So I'm going to do a dot, I'm gonna do like that, and then that, and that, and that, and that, like that. And then I'm gonna do dot, 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 dot looks like little kind of freckles and then I'm gonna do finish the flower off down here by adding orange in the middle and then I kind of want to outline them with orange a little bit to make them pop all right now I think we're ready for the outline along with the teeth so I'm going to switch to one of my tinier brushes which is I don't know they rubbed it off this one of the small ones from Walmart I'm gonna move my paints around now remember, if you don't, especially if you outline, you don't want too much paint on your brushes. So I'm gonna take the paint, I'm gonna take the water, spritz down the thing, and swirl my brush, circular motions, because if you just go back and forth, you risk um, bending your bristles, and then that's harder to control later on. Are you happy? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna outline her cheek. So I'm gonna come like this, and I'm gonna come down. 
like that. Adds a nice outline of the jaw because they your skull, they're all skeletons. Did you like Coco? Yeah. What was your favorite part of Coco? When the when Coco's mom throws the shoe and he, she says, "Go get her shoe." Oh, when when his grandma threw the shoe and told him to go get it. So, I don't know about y'all, but I, when I face paint, I have some kids that love to talk. Or sometimes they're really shy, and they like to scrunch up their face. And talking sometimes helps bring them out. So, I have, a, I have a tendency to find that if I talk to them and stuff like that, that they enjoy the experience more, and they're more willing to do it in the future. And that's what we want. We want the kids to be happy. We want them to enjoy themselves. You know, if it's talking to her about her Barbies that she brought and set up next to me, or if it's the movie Coco. I did a Coco party before, and one of the kids asked me for that crazy looking dog, and I loved every minute of trying to figure out how to paint it. Um, all right, baby, we're gonna bring your jaw up right there. Same with the other side. Like I said, you're the, you're the one that judges you. No one else does. Uh, I'm going to bring down this point a little bit more. Okay, so now we have the jaw and the cheeks done. We're going to bring the nose in. So you add like two teardrops. And then just connect them at the bottom. You can do this neatly or you can do it roughly. More masculine if you do it rough. But it's just the cave of where her nose goes. And... If it's too wide, like mine is, you can bring it in a little bit more. Kind of tickles, huh? Yeah. How old are you, Elizabeth? Seven. You're seven? Yeah. You're way younger than me. It's okay, I'm a kid at heart. All right, so you just do the best you can. Can you look at the camera, baby? And it blocks off her nose and makes it look like it's that little cave. So now I'm going to ask her to close her eyes. I'm going to give her eyelashes. All right, and now for the other eye. I'm gonna to try to stay a safe distance from the eye. If I try to pull out, I try to go for three, I try to over-exaggerate them if I can. And to be quite frank, they're never even with the other side. For the most part, kids don't notice. Parents don't either. As long as the kids are happy, the parents don't care. Um, I'm going to add a quick outline to the, to the shadow up here, like that. All right, now the last part is the glitter. So I like to wet the paint with my handy dandy Dollar Tree brush, or bottle. I want, I'm going to spray her face so that way the glitter adheres to it. And then I'm going to use my poof glitter, my poof purple glitter, to make it nice. Right, close your eyes. I'll see if she's already a pro. A couple good squirts, it reactivates the water, it helps look up a little bit, and it helps the glitter stick to it. Now you can get this glitter online. I normally buy the cup, the buy it online and then I buy the refill glitter packs. All right, now she just needs to dry off. <laughs> all right, and she's all done. Elizabeth, can you look at the, at the camera? All right. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, I think the next video I'm going to do is the how to use sponges and fill them up and show you my workstation. But Elizabeth, thank you for being my model, baby. Okay. You want to wait goodbye? Bye. Bye.